Hello, welcome to the fifth episode of Conversation of Change. We believe that everyone can become a change maker and through Conversation of Change, we hope to inspire you to make a difference to the community, no matter how big or small it is. Today, we have with us two young founders of a social enterprise called We Hero. All of us know that starting a social enterprise is not an easy task, but starting one when you are a youth is definitely a different story. So in our previous four episodes of Conversation of Change, we have talked to experienced and professional individuals in the social sector. So this time around, we are excited to hear from JC and Abigail about their journey and experiences of being a young change maker. So to get started, let's get them to share more about themselves. So hi JC, uh, thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to join us in this Facebook Live. We would like to introduce yourself to our viewers. Yeah, sure, um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is JC. And I am um, currently running Be Hero uh, together with Abigail. So I guess a bit more about me is I am currently studying um, at NUS, majoring in sociology and minoring in management. Yeah. Yes, I see. So JC have actually introduced our second uh, view, uh, guest in this uh, live as well. So we have Abigail. So hi Abigail, nice to meet you and thank you for joining us as well. Please introduce ourselves, uh, please introduce yourself to our viewers. Hi everyone, so my name is Abigail. Um, like JC, I'm also running We Hero and I'm also currently a student, but I'm studying at NTU in Public Policy and Global Affairs. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you guys. So uh, this social enterprise We Hero that you all have mentioned just now, would you like to share more about what he, We Hero is all about? Sure. Um, I think first of all, like thank you, um, Make the Change, for inviting us um, to share more about what we do at We Hero. So um, what we do as a social enterprise is we want to empower individuals with awareness and empathy towards social issues. And we do that through our experience, uh, our impactful experiences. So essentially what we do at our organization is we run experiential simulation programs. So through these programs, um, participants get to step into the shoes of individuals of marginalized communities and experience the different challenges that they face. So it's through um, this, our, our program that we want to have more people understand about the different perspectives that um, people from marginalized communities face and so that they can develop that social awareness and empathy for others. Um, and through that, we want to inspire more people, more youths and you know, individuals to take action and make a difference in their own community. I see. So what inspired you guys to actually start We Hero? Um, Maybe, yeah. yeah. JC, you can share first. But... Yeah, I can start then. Yeah. I think you can follow up. Um, yes, okay. So how uh, We Heroes started, um, it was initially a student project um, from, we were from um, Nyan Polytechnic and we were from the Diploma of Business and Social Enterprise. And actually, We Hero was initially called Camp Hero. So it came about when two of our friends um, came up with this idea, wanting to make a co contribution to community. And at that point of time, because um, we were not as socially aware and we only started to learn about like the different social issues in our community when we um, enrolled into the diploma. So we came up with this idea, uh, more so like inspired by another social enterprise in Hong Kong. Um, where they did aging simulations as well. And due to the similarities in our aging population, we wanted to bring it um, back to Singapore as well. And then we were thinking, you know, as youths, we wanted to make a change. Um, we wanted to do something for the community, but we were thinking like, what can we do? Or what um, is something unique that we can bring as youths? So the conclusion became like, oh, you know, as youths, we can bring fun. And so, you know, in polytechnics where camp is, you know, the hype of things, um, that's how the name came about, Camp Hero. I see. Because we wanted yeah. to bring fun. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the camp part. Um, mm. The hero, it's uh, H-I-R-O. Mm. 
it's a pun for hero as well. You know, we want to <laughs>、um, inspire more people to you know、um, make a difference in the community.、Um, but HIRO is also Japanese for、um, generosity and big heartedness, and that's what we wanted to bring to our peers as well. So initially, our target audience was youth. So it's a by youth for youth、um, mentality that we had when we started.、Um, so our very first prototype of our program is actually more based around games and fun.、Um, that's how the camp element ties in,、uh, and, and actually, so participants were actually playing games. While wearing like our aging simulation suit, where、mm-hmm. you know the suits that they wear can,、um, like, get the participants to bend their back, and so they'll be like bending their backs while trying to play, like,、uh, do some pass game, like so camp games in general. <laughs> yeah, see, so that's、I、that's、see. how we all started.、Mm. Um, but as we progressed, we realized that、um, we really wanted to make a deeper impact in. Um, what we wanted to bring to more of our youths, so we tweaked our programs through、um, a lot more research and the development of the program itself. So now our simulation program is、um, quite different from how we started in、um, simulating the different challenges that seniors face.、Um, so our, our flagship program is our aging simulation program. I see. Yeah. So maybe Abigail, you can share more about yeah flag your flagship program, the aging simulation program. Yeah. Yeah. So as JC mentioned, it the current program we have now is really like um I would say like a huge development from when we first started because we first started with games and everything, and now it's more impactful. So basically, the main point of the program is to enable participants to actually like step into the shoes of. Seniors and understand some of like the daily challenges and issues that they face in their daily life, and、um, the simulation itself has like four different parts that we look at. So it's like the four different issues that we focus on. So the first one is like the nursing home simulation. Then、um, we also have the cardboard collection or poverty simulation. Then we have the dementia, and we have the social isolation. So these four issues are like quite big issues that. Seniors in our community face, and it's something that we thought was relevant, at, um, to use as well. So like, it would be good if they were aware of these issues, and so we kind of like tweaked our program. We moved away from like the fun to the more like, you know, really experiencing what is it like in their daily lives. Like for example, in the dementia simulation, we really simulate like what is a maybe a typical day of a senior, and then we kind of use the different equipment. So like the aging suit that、uh, JC briefly mentioned. Um, to kind of simulate what it's like to have dementia or like be in that situation, yeah. So that's what it is now. But but what gave you guys the idea to actually use simulation as a form of awareness to like youths or like people that participate in your programs? Yeah, I think simulation for one definitely when we actually took that trip to Hong Kong, like during our when we were still in the diploma. Uh, they also use simulation, and that to us kind of like was the most impactful, I guess, experience. And we realized also like、um, the best way that you can learn, right, is actually through ex- experiencing something yourself. So、um, we wanted to, I guess, bring that element in because I feel、um, like you can't really empathize with people just through like you know looking at videos or like l- like talking to them. You kind of really need to experience it. So that's why we wanted to use experiential learning and simulation to kind of、uh, bring the issue of like the and across to use. Yeah. See, I actually attended one of your simulation、mm-hmm. program as well as the elderly simulation. Yeah, it actually really hit me really hard when like like the dementia part when you like start、mm-hmm. to forget everyone and then like in the elderly home where they give you the drinks. Like the weird drink, I don't remember very vividly, like very vividly that like this drink is very skeptical. Like I, I like couldn't bear to drink it, but like because like the people working there like are like forcing you to like hey drink it, drink it. It's your breakfast, it's your lunch or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so it really hit me, and I 
I think this Hong Kong trip that you guys have went to, is the algorithm simulation, is it like similar or is it like different from what you guys are doing now? Um, in a sense, like, uh, for example, the equipment that we use is a lot kind of inspired from them, but um, we try to contextualize it to Singapore context because um, over there, maybe that, um, like what they focus on is more on the health. But, but we also focus on the social and emotional uh, issues that elderly face. For example, like um, you talk about, uh, you know, like how it really hit you that people forget you or you forget people. And so that is something that we didn't experience while we were there, like because they focus largely on like the physical like mm-hmm. ailments. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. So uh, as a young change maker, right, like how did you balance between like thinking of all these and like running these simulations and everything while like studying or is this like part of your like FYP project or something like that? Uh, maybe I can share a yeah. little bit. Um, so actually how we got into this whole journey of um, mm-hmm. social entrepreneurship, um, even though we were not the founders, but um, we joined really early in the development stage. So we were part of the core team. Um, so I joined in like 2017. And I think that was um, where I first started to be really involved in like the social enterprise scene and getting to know more people, mm. and networking. Um, so during then, because uh, we didn't have a lot of... Um, I guess, knowledge in, in this field. And, you know, all we had was, you know, what we learned in school. Yeah. Um, and so jumping right into it, it's really about um, applying what we learned and also trying to find out more about what we can do as a social enterprise. So um, in 2018, so 2018 was the year where Abigail and I actually, you know, jumped right into leading um, We Hero full-time as a startup. So that's where, you know, both of us took a gap year and really wanted to, you know, give it a shot and see what we could do in, in that year and where we could bring We Hero forward. Um, so that year was a really interesting year, I would say. We tried a lot of things. We met a lot of people. And um, I think that was really... Um, a, a, a turning point for Be Hero where we um, really had to explore a lot of um, boundaries like different opportunities we, whatever there was in the uh, social enterprise scene we just like you know went for it and see what we could learn who we could meet and if there are people who can help us along the way you know we won't we will just you know approach them and ask for um, guidance or advice in any way so in a sense I guess as a young change maker there were a lot of uncertainties um, being that um, we were new in the field we were young in the field so um, a lot of people that we meet were actually older than us um, but I think it's really encouraging when they actually share about how um, even though we are young and we may not know as much, but you know we had the courage to just jump into it and um, start leading the change that we want to see through um, our enterprise. And I think when they share about how it inspires them, it keeps us going as well. And besides, like um, the external part where we you know meet people, even in um, the programs that we run. Um, in our simulation programs where we started with use, um, then we expanded beyond use and had like corporate clients. Um, it, it's true the continuous um, running of the programs and you know just pushing forward with what we do um, in our business. Um, it keeps us going in when we see um, the impact that we can bring to people. And that's true. Um, the youth participants sharing with us how they've been impacted by the experience like yourself when you shared you know how the experience um, 
has uh, impacted you in some way. Same for um, when you know corporate clients engage us. Um, in a sense, because they weren't um, our target audience, but they somehow chanced upon us through referrals. So that's where we got into um, the corporate scene. And that's something we will be looking at um, expanding from here on. Mm, yeah. I see. So like you mentioned that, you guys mentioned that you actually took over this project from the actual founders of Camp Hero. And uh, like what sparked you all to actually like brave like bring up your courage and like say hey let me just run this you know like i will do this with my time my effort my money like maybe abigail wants to share about how you first started with Cam- uh, we hero and like what pushed you what motivate you to do it <laughs> um um i guess at the start right like to be completely honest it's more like a like an obligation kind of thing yeah because I just want like I couldn't bear to see it die so I was like no you know like must do something about it and but I think later on it kind of like um when we sat down and right like, really thought about okay where do we want to go with this because it's like um our our like our I guess enterprise now what do we want to do with it and so like after we thought about um these things and then we were like, okay, um, let's try to do all um to do something else. So one of the things that we really um started more from like really our own initiative was actually the Yes Festival. So um we conducted that in twenty eighteen, and it was more to kind of uh bond uh youth and seniors together because through our programs we highlight a lot of like you know how the seniors are in like kind of I guess bad situations due to all the challenges that they face and some of the social issues but we wanted to kind of also let you realize that oh seniors have something to offer and we can learn from seniors and for the seniors as well there is something that they can stand to gain from making connections with the youth so this intergen event was um, something that we did in 2018 um, in conjunction with um, like a good space as well so we got their help for this whole event and we attracted about uh, more than 200 youth and seniors. Yeah. And so it was really, um, we could see how we who brought the impact in a different way through something other than the aging simulation program. And I think that was also uh, like a, how, how do you say, it? like a realization like, oh, you know, we're actually growing. We, we don't have to stay as Camp Hero, like the previous founders imagined it. And it was like, you know, it's within our control to change this thing. So it's not a, like an obligation anymore, I would like to say. Yeah, it's like a really, um, we want to do it. Yeah, kind of mindset now. Yeah. So yep. How about JC? Like, what pushed you? What motivate you? Mm, okay. Um, for me, it was um, when, du- during my polytechnic years where um, in, in the beginning, I wasn't, I guess as active in school so like you know just going for classes but um, I think the Hong Kong immersion program really changed my mindset in you know the different experiences I've had like we we attended this refugee simulation when we were there and uh, I guess I was really impacted by it and so when um, the founder of Ken Hero actually approached me um, he asked if um, you know, I would like to join, you know, be part of something and see what kind of difference we can make together. And I'm like, sure. Because <laughs> like, you know, I, I wanted to try a lot of things, but um, I, so I did explore different things. Like, you know, I wanted to start an F&B social <laughs> enterprise. I went in for the competition, but, you know, there were other people as well. So um, I also did an FYP in my year. Um, which was really um, something that people didn't explore because um, for my batch, they were offered the option of like internship and FYP. But I decided, you know, let's try something that people don't do. <laughs> and like, you know, when else will I get this opportunity um, if not now? So yeah, I guess I'm the 10th 
um, I'm the type to kind of go and try new things, different things. So when he asked, I'm like, sure, let's, you know, see where we can take this. Um, yeah, I guess being part of the core team at the start, you know, I really see the kind of um, um, impact that we can make through our program, even though, you know, we were still in the initial stage and like, um, not sure how it will work out. But, you know, through trial and error, um, we had the FYP team come in and join us. And so, so that includes like Abigail and um, a few others who were part of the FYP project. They really helped to um, develop what we do at Cam Hero then. And it really pushed the business forward. And yeah, I would say um, because of their efforts, we managed to do a lot more um, when we took over in 2018. Um, they really did a lot of you know, research, development. They went to do a lot of marketing. Um, and because of that, we had a lot of um, people inquiring about what we do in 2018 and that really pushed us forward. Um, so what sparked me to like, I guess, take over um, in 2018 was, um, you know, bes besides um, having the deals coming in, I, by, by then, like I was already a year into what we do at Camp Hero and I would say my experience being in there changed um, my mindset about like what, um, of, of how like youths approach seniors and even for myself, like previously before like Camp Hero existed, <laughs> I'm like, um, when I think about volunteering, I don't really think about volunteering with seniors because, you know, there's that language barrier. I'm not sure how do I talk to them. Um, so, um, being in Camp Hero, it actually changed a lot of um, my thoughts about how we can actually um, engage with seniors. Like, you know, they are not, um, they have so much value to bring to us. And that's where I also started to, you know, in my own <laughs> um, personal story would be, um, I started to visit my grandparents a lot more. And it's really because of the experience or, or the experience in Camp Hero and how I see the youths go through the experience and they come to us sharing like, oh, now I understand um, maybe like why my grandparents um, ask questions and, you know, I want to be more patient with them. I will want to spend more time with them. And that really touched me. I'm like, I should be doing that too. <laughs> so yeah, that, you know, I started to um, visit my grandparents more. Um, even till now, um, so in, in that sense, um, I guess, like how, why I took over is um, when I see that the impact in what we do, do, um, like that does impact the participants, whether youths or, you know, the corporate, um, corporate clients that come and attend um, in the same way that it has done for me. So... I felt like hmm, we need to continue the work that we do. So that's why I'm like, okay, let's see. let's go. Uh, that's actually a very interesting take because from from the past like uh, guests that we have on conversation or challenge, like most of them are like really passionate about the social issue that they were like championing or like they were like tackling or answering. Like I, I'm very into like the senior, the mental health. That's why I'm championing these causes for my social enterprise, for my non-profit organizations and stuff like that. Then hearing from you guys, it's more of like, it started off as more of an assignment, but with the growth and with the understanding and with the impact made, you guys like gradually and slowly understood why it needs to be address why elderly why the elderly sector needs to be addressed why do they need like support from us and the youth why do the new youth need to support the seniors and stuff like that so that's a very new take in my like from what i've heard from the past few conversations of change yes and you mentioned that like there are you saw a growth in we hero in 2018 and as a young change maker what do you think are like the pros and cons of like this growth of your we hero 
Like Abigail, maybe you can share first. <laughs> um, I guess like um the pros and cons, like for one, like when we first started, even with the previous founders, there was a lot of uncertainty on how we should even begin. You know, how should we start a social enterprise? How do we register a business and stuff like that? And so there were a lot of things that we had to learn on the way. And as you know, we kind of like grew faster and like we had more how would you say like more deals more programs then we were like oh okay um how can we like better manage and everything so like a lot of these things were not taught to us in class like we uh, we learned a lot of theory a lot of like uh, yes okay there, there is practical application for sure like for example financial management we definitely apply it in our business but um like there's still a lot of things that school can't teach you and you we had to really learn like as we progress. So I guess that in it's kind of like a pro and a con because we we learn new things through the whole growth process. But the cons is that um we were super uncertain about these things and like there's a lot of time I guess put into learning these new things instead of like you know straight away applying uh for example if someone was more experienced they would know how to deal with all the different challenges that uh, came with opening uh, starting a social enterprise so um, I, I guess in a sense that it's like the pro and con uh, and, and I guess another thing is that um, we had a quote with how, how would you say this mm, let me think of the, the right way to phrase it but more of um, like we also had to look at what was the impact that we were doing because that was something that um, was very like a strongly emphasized thing I mean through our diploma you know we had mm. to be profitable and we had to make so, like good social impact and so sustainability was always on our minds like how can we make uh, we feel sustainable and that was something that we kept asking ourselves like every day I think we still ask it <laughs> to ourselves every day as well and um, so that was um, why we I guess we ventured into um, providing for corporates as well. So we, we not only conduct our programs for schools, we also do it for corporates as, you know, part of their whole CSR. And then we also do it for social service organizations like Lions Befrienders, for example, um, as part of like a volunteer introduction or like a training. So we really, I guess, um, with all these uncertainties, right, we had to go and try out new things. And so that, I guess, the whole growth was... a uh, I guess, okay, like, it's a good thing in the long, <laughs> legit a good thing, yeah, but um, definitely there's a lot of challenges, yeah, that you would face when you start a social enterprise, yeah. How about JC, what were some of the pros and cons as a young change maker? Um, <laughs> okay, pros and cons, I would say, um, for me, one of the biggest pros would be um, I guess uh, personal development so you know going into something that's you know totally different it's not school Mm -hmm. it's not work you know like a internship or a full-time job but you know it's a startup and having to manage it um, was a really different experience where you had to Really, yes, as Abigail said, you know, you have to learn a lot of things on the job. Um, a lot of things you have to figure out along the way. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, all the paperwork, the admin side of things, or, um, you know, business development. How do you bring clients in? How do you develop your product? Those are all um, things that we had to learn along the way. And um, I would say it's the whole journey of growth for the both of us was really um, in, um, I guess, that, that knowledge in um, what we need to do in the enterprise as well as, um, I guess, in our own journey where we um, have to, you know, go and find different things. It develops us in our skills where, um, you know, whether it's communication skills where we have to, you know, network or, you um, you know, the hard skills where, you know, we have to pick up finance, even though it's not um, our niche. <laughs> so all these things, because it's um, two of us running it, 
and ourselves. So we have to um, multitask and like do a few different things at once. And um, I guess one of the things is um, really to plan ahead. And, and that was something that um, we were lacking in at that point of time because we were like, you know, kind of focused on, okay, what do we do? How do we like, you know, grow in a business? Like quite, I guess, focused on um, what it was in front of us. And so in that sense, I guess that's a con um, mm-hmm. in um, having to learn along the way, um, whether it's about sustainability, that's, you know, long-term planning. But um, I guess as we are starting out, um, it's, a little hard for us to visualize that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess that's one of the con as well. Um, I, and I guess that comes from, you know, experience. So now that we have, I guess, come a little further and grown a little more than when we started, um, it has been a really, um, I would say, fruitful journey. And, you know, I really learned a lot. I, we both learned a lot through the experience. Um, whether it's like meeting different people, we had, you know, mentors who guide us along. Um, we meet a lot of people we collaborated with and learn from what they do, improve in, you know, our business operations or how we plan forward. Um, in that sense, I would say there's more pros than cons. Um, because it's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, there's more pros than cons. Um, yeah. In a, in a sense, um, there will always be challenges no matter what you do. Nice. Um, and every time people ask, like, um, you know, do you regret taking a gap year? Do you, do you, will you encourage youths to, like, take a gap year or, like, you know, start a solution or start something? I'm like, yes, of course. Like, you will gain so much more than um, not doing it. You know, nice. like... Yeah. The experience is just something you cannot get um, in school or in, uh, yeah, you, ca- you can't get this kind of experiences in school. And perhaps even in some organizations, if um, they don't, especially, I guess, bigger organizations where they're more structured, whereas, you know, as a startup, it's, you know, what you do and how you plan. And, you know, it's all in your hands in that sense. So... I guess taking up that kind of responsibility also developed uh, myself in that way. And yeah, I, w- I would definitely say go take a gap year, try and like <laughs> figure out what you like, what you don't like, try different things, find out your interests, your passion. And yeah, just try it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's similar to me. I'm also taking a gap year now. But like I'm trying out the social enterprise sector like by working here and stuff like that. Yeah. And speaking of mentors, because JC mentioned about mentors, do you think that as a youth that started a project, it's an advantage that you have several teachers and several lecturers around you to guide you along this journey? Uh, sorry, like JC, I'm your third. Maybe you can share more. <laughs> I was like, Abby, do you want to go first? <laughs> oh, Abby, go. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, I think definitely to have mentors is good because um, at the start also, we, uh, we didn't, I guess, lecturers for input on how we should do certain things. And especially because we didn't have a lot of experience. Like, we went through internships and stuff like that. But, you know, it's a whole different ball game when you look at uh, starting your own social enterprise and managing a business. So definitely, it's good to get mentors. Um, or I would say, like, besides mentors, another thing that's important, because I think JC will elaborate more on the, the, like, the benefits of having mentors. But another thing that uh, I thought would be important is to have a good support system. Mm-hmm. And I think that's in your... Uh, families and, and friends because um, I think a lot of people question me like eh, why why are you taking a gap year why not like go to uni and stuff like that so it's always good to have like friends and family who kind of support your decision because it will definitely make how, um, the journey like 
uh, I I would say like a bit easier because sometimes you can feel very alone, like apart from like you know your team members and stuff like that. So if you have family and friends that support, um, your decisions, I think it will um definitely keep you more motivated as well. Yeah, maybe JC can explain a bit more about mentors. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Actually, it, it's exactly what um Abby said. Like, um, it's it's. I think we were really um thankful that we had that you know social support system where you know our families were supportive of what we do. Um, and even having uh people we work with um, you know whether it's our partners or our clients, and even our lecturers, they were very encouraging in um, what we do. So along the ways, um, there we have a lot of support in that sense. And I think that's um, a bulk of like why we are still doing what we do. And um, as for mentors, uh, we started with it as a school project. So, you know, our lecturers were our mentors and they really helped us um, in trying to guide us, how do we, um, you know, take practical steps in you know, managing a social enterprise, a business? How do we create that social impact or develop it further? And I think we were just really very thankful um, to have um, such lecturers and mentors um, who really pushed us to go out and do what we do um, and, and that was really the starting point of how we managed to, you know, step out and do the different, um, and, and develop We Hero to where we're at today. And along the way, as we, you know, journeyed, we met a lot of people, um, whether they worked with us or not. Uh, many, uh, as we became friends or as we have that relationship built, they gave us really great advice um, and a lot of our um, I would say partner organizations they supported us a lot and and um, one of them would be uh, one of them would be uh, Youth Course Singapore NYC they did support us um, in you know providing the resources uh, when we needed some advice and help they also were there for us um, and a good space. I think some of you might know them. Um, they did support us in our journey when uh, we were exploring new things in 2018. We had a lot of other um, partners as well. I may not be able to name all of them, but I would say starting from where we um, journeyed was, you know, in school, me and Polly. So um, our lecturers, uh, maybe I should give a shout out Oh my Mr. god, Javian. I'm gonna thank, thank the whole world. <laughs> Mr. Javian, Mr. Malta, Mr. Cha, Mr. Denny. So they were all like um, supporting us along the way. Um, yeah, we, I think we were just really blessed to have people who come along our journey and, um, you know, give us that moral support, that encouragement, you know, advice in, you know, perhaps wh- where we can work towards or what we can improve. And that really brought us further than, you know, if we were just alone and trying to figure things out. So we're just really thankful to all those out there who helped us along the way. Yeah. yeah. We actually had a good space on our conversation of change as well. They were our third guest. Yeah, we had Vincent. And speaking of like mentors and like partners and support, I think it's very important to really have a strong group of supporters and like people who believe what you do because if they don't help you and they don't support you then if they are the closest among you then it will be difficult to believe that your startup might actually succeed so yeah very nice that you guys have a lot a lot of great like people around you to support what you are doing so let's dive into the COVID situation a little bit I understand that COVID-19 has disrupted the way like companies run their businesses. And from what you guys have like introduced, WeHero, it's heavily based off like programs and interactions with your participants. So you might you guys might have taken like a hard hit when there are like so many restrictions in place. 
So it has been probably very difficult for you guys to run your simulation programs in real life now. So how did you guys adapt to this situation? Maybe Abigail can share more about it. I think for one, when the, um, one thing that we did that I remember was that when the situation hadn't like really worsened yet, we sent like we tried to encourage people to still uh, come for our pro like um, engage us as a client. Oh, no, wait, as, as a pro service provider. Yeah, yeah sorry. Um, we kind of um, had all these measures in place. Like we would take your temperature. We would ensure safe distancing and stuff like that. But once the situation totally like worsened, like in April and everything went to lockdown or circuit breaker, um, we were definitely very hard hit, like, uh, because our programs itself were really need to be physical because it's an ex like a simulation and experiential program. So what we did was um to actually start developing other programs, and so um uh we might have mentioned uh, earlier a little bit that we are undergoing a whole rebranding process. So part of that process was also to create um different programs to focus on different issues and one thing that we did to actually uh, sort of kind of cope with the current situation where everything is online is to start developing an online program so we hope that um, because it's still in the development stages that, but we hope that this online program can very very closely mimic what we do in the animation program as best as possible so that you know there's still an, a way that people can get access to our program um, without you know putting themselves at risk and because as you, you know everything's online right, um, right now like school is online work is online and there was no like um, possible way for us to still continue doing physical programs if we really wanted to you know continue surviving so this was really one way that uh, we tried to adapt to the current uh, situation yeah I see Maybe. yeah to add on, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. sure, sure. Um, I think because of um, the whole climate that we're in now, where you know our activities have to have to stop, in that sense, um, we decided to, I guess, take hold of it as an opportunity. So, um, during our summer break, which was around May, Ju May, June, July, <laughs> yeah. So during our summer break. Um, we embarked on our rebranding process. So we actually um, had people join us and um, see what we can do to improve our services, develop our program, and um, you know, reorganize like whatever um, the different functions that we had, whether it's you know, in our marketing, and what kind of strategies we're looking at, or in, in product development, as Abby mentioned. An online program was um, one way we looked at in um, trying to be, like we had to be innovative in that sense um, to adapt to the whole situation and looking at how we can bring the experience online. Another program that we were developing during summer was um, it's, it's our poverty simulation program. So that's still in the process. Um, and, and so we decided to just make use of this time since you know we may not be able to go out there and conduct our physical um, experiential simulation program you know we work on developing ourselves so that when we come back we have new things to offer um, and prepare for you know the future years to come I see. so why did you guys want to actually rebrand we hero because it shifted from Cam Hero to We Hero. Yeah. So was there a specific reason behind it? Yes, definitely. Oh, <laughs> I see. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> I guess one of the main reasons is um, to shift away from the camp. Because mm. a lot of people actually ask us, um, when we were um, named Camp Hero, they were like, oh, so do you run camps? We were like, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> We actually run programs. So in that sense, to shift away from that. Mm. And um, another reason is because we wanted to rebrand ourselves um, 
so that we uh, look have that professional look in whether our branding or in our services so that mm. when we do um, expand our service to corporates even more, um, we would be able to um, address the needs and that they have as, as corporate clients, the different um, ways that we will approach our programs and our clients. Um, and we thought like through the rebranding, um, we also wanted to be more inclusive in what we do. So that's why the we, we wanted to focus on um, it, on it being a collective effort of the community because you know we know um, we cannot do everything alone and if we have people around us to um, bring the work that we do forward um, whether it's you know the participants themselves um, you know get gathering and maybe starting an initiative themselves we wanted to encourage that um, kind of um, collective effort where you know we can work better together we can go further and create greater impact um, together as a community. So that's the reason for we, Hero. And so we kept the Hero because that's what we wanted to do. You know, our tagline is mm. small city, big heart. So, <laughs> yeah. I see. So COVID, did COVID-19 like actually gave you guys the inspiration to actually rebrand or you already had that mind, had that thought uh, before COVID even strike. Okay. Oh, JC, want to share? <laughs> uh, um, okay, the rebranding. Um, it's something that I had in mind for quite a while now, mm-hmm. and um, I think the COVID nineteen situation, um, and and the summer break that we had, it just it was just a really good opportunity for us to, you know, tap on it and see, you know, what kind of resources we can get. Um, manpower to come in and you know, help us develop what we have. So um, I would say it was an opportunity more than th- that's why a lot of people say like, oh, was COVID COVID nineteen like, um, you know, not not a good period of time. I'm like, I actually did quite a lot of things during the circuit breaker. I'm like pretty thankful for the opportunity opportunity actually. Yeah. yeah. So that's for me, Abby. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I just want to say, like, um, I think we both thought about the rebranding or, like, basically the main thing was the name and how, like, um, our image was to um, the client. And, like, we thought we thought about it, but I think we didn't really um, address it until COVID hit or the summer period was coming. And I remember asking JC, so, um, like, what are the plans for the summer? Because usually for us, like, you know, with uni, uh, we can't really go all out, like, during uh, when we are studying. So, mm. I was like, the summer is the time for us if we want to do anything. Mm. And um, she brought it up, and then I was like, hey, that's not, like, a bad idea. I think um, we could, you know, possibly do this. And so, yeah, COVID-19 really it was just a, a good opportunity, even though it sounds really bad to say it because it's such a bad thing. But, yeah, it, it was a very really good opportunity for us. I think it's also one of the advantages of starting a social enterprise younger because like you don't really have much as much responsibilities or liabilities to attend to when you are an adult starting a social enterprise because now you are studying and you still receive some sort of support from your parents. So even with like such situation that strike and cause you guys to like need to think of a way to like uh, rebrand your social enterprise or like to take a break or anything it doesn't really affect much from your livelihood as compared to if an adult runs a social enterprise and he has to be reliable to all their staffs or their members and things like that so I think there's one very good point that maybe our viewers can take note of is that when you start young you have more opportunities to grow more opportunities to meet failures and failures brings you closer to success right <laughs> yes yep yep <laughs> said, well said yeah <laughs> yeah so
So, okay, now it's already 6.50 while well, we have been chatting for 15 minutes already and well, you guys have actually shared a lot about like your journey of camp, uh, from Camp Hero to ReHero and maybe we have just last two more last questions for you guys. So, uh, to, um, to maybe give our viewers a bit more insights, okay? Uh, if you could go back to the time when you first started or you first joined We Hero, what would you have done differently? Maybe Abigail can start first. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, so definitely the first thing I would change about the whole process would be to go in with a plan in mind. Because I think while well, it's good that we were able to pivot a few times, like, you know, try out new things, um, I think we didn't have like a very long-term plan in place. So a lot of the times we were just like what um, JC mentioned earlier, we were just focusing on the like the now, the present. And we re didn't really look at like, oh, you know, what's going to happen in the future. Like even when we went to uni, we didn't really consider like, oh, um, how are we going to juggle Camp Hero when we are doing uh, university and we were really focused on you know like getting used to uni and stuff like that so I think um like if we had a chance to redo this I would say have a plan like going in with a plan so that it's easier for us in a sense because if we have a long-term direction for the social enterprise then it's easier for us to make the short-term goals or like you know if there are things that can change then we know like, okay, if this isn't working, then we'll go in this direction. Like, what's the next plan? So it's always good to have plans. And uh, that's what I would change. Yeah. I see. How about JC? <laughs> what would you have done differently? What would I have done differently? Um, it's, besides what Abby brought up in, you know, planning long term, um, I think this, this falls under long-term planning, which is uh, looking at how do we develop our team. Um, that was something that we weren't sure of at that point of time. So that's why um, it, like for that year, it's been the two of us. Like we did try to do a lot of different things. Um, but now I see that, uh, you know, we cannot do a lot with um, a smaller team and, if we had developed our team then and you know recruited more people in to um, develop the business further, maybe that was something that um, I would have done differently in um, getting more people on board with us to um, do more in that sense. And actually that's also something that we are currently looking at. So yes, more of you know forward planning and that comes with you know, team development, um, whether it's you know just ourselves in the team itself, but um, developing our business together. I think that's all part of um, the whole process of a, a startup journey that we didn't know at that point of time. So yeah, that's something I'll do differently. I think you guys have actually like, identified what you guys want to change when you go back and you're probably are like starting to do the planning now which is not too late yeah so it's actually not many people can actually sit back and ask themselves like what would you have changed if you were to go back or what would you have done differently because they are it's it's keep you are keep going on the go on the go you have to do this you have to do this you don't have to you don't have the time to actually sit back and think what what should be done, what should be done differently. So I think it was a very, like, it's a good opportunity that, like, COVID was here to give you guys some thinking and, like, to mature your brand and to mature yourself even more as well. Yeah. So one final question for you guys. So uh, what is one advice would you give to our audience especially our young change maker, if he or she would like to start their own social enterprise. Maybe Abby? Yeah, Abigail, you want to share first? <laughs> I was hoping this time would be JC, but it's okay. <laughs> um, I think like one advice is definitely to have that passion. I feel like um, although we 
um, how we began wasn't really like uh, like what you mentioned, right? It was a very interesting start, um, starting out story. So um, I think like um, that passion is important because I, I, every change maker I see, they are really passionate about the cause that, that, that they are advocating for. And it really, I think, is the, I guess in a way the game changer because if you're really passionate about something, right, you can, you can really drive what you do and like, you know, find that thing that uh, makes you wake up every morning. Yeah, I, I would say that it. Um, for us, Camp Hero didn't start out like that. Definitely for me, I can say it didn't start out like that. But um, I think passion is really important. Like to know that, uh, you know, you know, going out to make a change in the world, you know, to have that mindset, I think is very important. Yeah. I think maybe not just like, I think people have can have different passions mm. in regards to what you do. Mm. Like maybe you might not be passionate about, about the beneficiary group that you are helping, but you can be pa- passionate about wanting to start a social enterprise. Yeah. And that is what keeps you going on because you are doing what you are passionate about. So mm-hmm. I think that people should find like their individual preference in what, they should find passion in for yeah definitely. like they shouldn't yeah they shouldn't just focus on like oh i need to be passionate about beneficiaries that's yeah, why i need to help sure, beneficiary sure. yeah so that's a good thing that you identified because many people always tell us that like we have to be passionate about the group that we help but you can always start and then start to understand and then mm. start to grow that passion sooner or later yeah, yeah. So how about JC? What about you? What is one advice <laughs> you'll give to our young change makers? One okay. Um I think what Abby pointed out is is really one of the important points where, you know, having that passion for what you do. And um another advice I would say is um, as might be a little cringy, but I would say believe. <laughs> um, like believe, believe in um, what you do, whether it's, um, you know, if, if it's a new idea, um, you know, but if you do believe in the cause, then even if it's something that doesn't work, you will still keep going for it, you know, make changes, um, explore the different things that other people are doing, you know, pivoting from what you're doing, um, but I think if you have that belief in what you do, um, then it will drive you further. And even if you know you encounter challenges along the way, you fail along the way, um, if you hold on to that passion and that belief in, in what you do, then you know you will keep going and you can go further with that. And um, I guess I would say, like tapping on um, what Shemin mentioned just now, is, um, you know, as youths, we, even though we may not have that kind of um, knowledge and experience, um, I think that what we in, in our younger generation now is that we have, a, a lot of us have that passion and we want to bring that change and impact in society, you know, in, in some way or another. And so I feel that it's, um, important to tap on this strength that we have um, and really go out there and search for, you know, what is it that you want to do for long term, whether it's your passion or something that you want and, and you know, as Abby said, like what wakes you up um, and, and really just try it, I would say. So as, as I mentioned, like um, to young change makers who wants to, um, whether it's start a social enterprise, start a initiative, or even you know rally your friends to go and do something together, I would say go for it and and just try it because you wouldn't know if you don't try. Um, so yes, that's what I would say. Yeah, I think this applicable to like the phrase "you only live once." Yeah, it's like, don't, yeah, don't be afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid to try because mm. we are we are still young. We can still afford to try, so you can afford to experiment and things like that. Yeah, so that's a very nice way to end off today's conversation or change with JC's very inspirational 
words <laughs> and also ambiguous. Yeah, so we have come to the end of today's conversation of change. Uh, thank you, JC and Abigail, for taking time off your busy schedule to share your experiences as a change maker. We have definitely learned more from a youth perspective of running a social enterprise. So for our viewers, if you'd like to learn more about WeHero, you can visit their website at www.weherosg.com. And they are currently revamping their website and introducing new simulation programs in the near future. So to stay updated with their journey, you also can follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Cam Hero. And also one last thing, the good news is that they are also recruiting interested change maker to join their core team at WeHero. So if you are interested in joining them and passionate about passionate about the course that they are doing, you can always drop them an email at their website at www.weherosg.com. Yes. So Abigail and JC, do you have any last words before we end this conversation of change? Um, maybe just a very short one. Like, Thank you all for listening so far. Uh, we hope that uh, our story has um, somewhat impacted you in, in a way and yes to add on to what Shermin is saying um, we are rebranding ourselves and so we are actually looking for people with a drive for social impact to be part of our core team so if you want to explore the opportunity and the different functionalities of a social enterprise pick up business related skills um, in, in a startup environment we are looking for individuals who are driven to create that social change and so if you have that entrepreneurial mindset and willingness to learn, please do reach out to us. We will be more than happy to, you know, speak with you and connect with you. Yes, thank you for having us here. Thank you. How about Abigail? Do you have anything to add on? Uh, no, I'll just say like, you know, go for it, man. Anything that you want to try, do just do it now. Yeah, there's no better time to do it. <laughs> Yes, okay. Thank you for taking your time and we have come to the end of conversation on stage. So for our viewers, thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you in our next one. So have a nice evening and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.